back students so today we are going to discuss another modern costing approach that is life cycle costing so when i say this word life cycle costing i lay my stress on one important word that is life cycle isn't it so in life cycle costing we are not concerned of anything we are concerned only at the life cycle that is in life cycle costing we look into the life cycle we are not concerned of any accounting period that is days months or years we are looking only at the life cycle so life cycle costing is a process of evaluating cost by studying the life cycle of a product okay i'm repeating it life cycle costing is a process of finding out the cost by analyzing the life cycle of a product so as you all know a product or a project generally passes through different phases so when you evaluate the cost of a product or project on the basis of the different phases it involves then it is termed as life cycle costing now okay so life cycle costing is a process of evaluating cost from the research and development phase that is from the idea generation phase till the ultimate removal of product from the market that cost is generally termed as life cycle cost i'm repeating it so life cycle costing is evaluating cost from the research and development phase till the ultimate removal of product from the market is termed as life cycle costing so under certain circumstances what happens is even a product is removed from the market what you have to do is you have to provide sales service to the product isn't it for example an apple product is invented it is running in the market and one or the other day it is removed from the market isn't it sir so after removal you have to provide certain after sales service isn't it then a the cost is involved so in life cycle costing after sales service cost is also included clear so life cycle costing is finding out the cost of the product from the research and development phase till the ultimate disposal of the product and also include the cost which is involved for providing after sales service and this life cycle costing is mainly used by the management and decision making that is in order to fix a selling price for a product or in order to take decision whether to make or buy a product this life cycle costing is generally used so let me give you an example of how this life cycle costing is used by the management in decision making take an example that a company wants a water pump and it has two options with it that is red pump as well as blue pump and the cost of red pump is 10000 and the cost of blue pump is 5000 we normally being an individual what we do we generally prefer the pump which is cheaper but what a company does is it generally implies the concept of life cycle costing and then it tries to find out which pump it has to buy okay so what a company does is it will generally calculate the life cycle costing so once a pump is take an example of a red pump once a pump is purchased the purchase price is 10000 and as the life goes on that is for the installation it takes 1000 and for maintenance per year it takes 5000 and power consumption it takes 4000 per year repair it takes 300 and disposal it takes 200 and if the life of the pump is 20 years and for 20 years the life cycle cost will be for red pump it will be 1 lakh 16200 and if you look at the blue pump then the cost of the pump is 5000 and for installation it takes 1000 and for average maintenance charge for a year it takes 6000 and for power it takes 5000 and for repair per year it takes 300 and for disposal it takes 200 and if the life of the pump is same that is 20 years then the life cycle cost for 20 years is 1 lakh 33200 so what can you observe from this picture so the pump which cost high is costing you less in your future and the pump which cost less is costing you high
buy in the future. Then what will the management do? It will buy the pump which costs less than its life cycle. So this is where the life cycle costing is actually implied in an organization now. Clear? And coming to the key concepts of life cycle costing. So in life cycle costing, there are two concepts which it is based on. The first one is we don't look at the accounting period. In life cycle costing, as I've placed a stress, we are concerned only of the life cycle. We are not concerned of the accounting period. That is months, years or days are not taken into consideration. And the second one is we look at the product or the project life cycle. That is the phases of the product or the phases of the project is generally taken into consideration for finding out the cost in life cycle costing. Okay. So the next topic what we are going to discuss in life cycle costing is the types of life cycle costing. So this life cycle costing is of two types. The first one is product life cycle costing and the second one is project life cycle costing. So product life cycle costing is when you are evaluating the cost of the product by studying the life cycle of a product. It is termed as product life cycle costing. I am repeating it. Product life cycle costing is evaluating the cost of the product by studying the entire life of the product. That is from the introduction stage to the decline stage when you make a study and when you try to evaluate the cost of the product, it is termed as product life cycle costing. Okay. And the second type of life cycle costing is project life cycle costing. So this project life cycle costing is a method of evaluating cost of owing a physical asset. That is when you try to find out the cost of owing a physical asset by studying the economic life of the asset then it is termed as project life cycle costing. I hope it's clear. So project life cycle costing is evaluating the cost of owing a project by studying the economic life of the project it is termed as Project life cycle costing. So this project life cycle costing involves different elements of cost. So the, the elements of cost are generally categorized into three types. The first one is initial cost. Second one is operating cost. And the third one is disposal cost. So coming to the first one that is initial cost. So initial cost is the cost which is initially incurred when you start a project. That is termed as initial cost and the cost may be either your acquisition cost or the installation cost, the commission what you pay or the amount what you pay for obtaining space, recruitment of new staff or purchase of equipment may be your initial cost which is incurred for a project. And the second one is operating cost. So operating cost is the cost which is involved for operating the project in actual. That is termed as operating cost. So this operating cost will not include merely the cost which is given to an operator. It will also include the cost for maintenance of that operation. That is, it includes the material control cost, material handling, training cost and recruitment of any new staff. And the last one is disposal cost. So disposal cost means the cost which is incurred for disposing the assets and making the place good. That is for a project, once the life of the project is completed, you have to dispose the assets, isn't it? So disposal cost is the cost which is incurred for disposing the assets and making the space good for next use is termed as disposal cost. And the year cost which is incurred is known as disposing cost. So the next concept what we are going to discuss in life cycle costing is the stages of life cycle costing. So generally this life cycle costing can be used by the management and decision making, isn't it? So in order to use this concept in decision making, it has to follow the three staged process. So what are the stages? The first one is life cycle cost planning stage, 
The second stage is life cycle cost analysis preparation stage. And the third one is life cycle cost implementation and monitoring stage. So let us discuss one by one what the stage actually tells us. So coming to the first one that is life cycle state cost planning stage. So this is actually a preparatory stage. And the four steps followed in this life cycle cost planning stage is the first one is development of a plan. And the second step is development of LCC model. And the third one is implementation of LCC model. And the fourth one is recording and reviewing life cycle cost results. So under the first step, the first sub-stage which is followed is development of a plan. So in order to implement the life cycle costing, a plan has to be developed. And this plan generally shows the purpose as well as scope of analysis. So in order to show the purpose as well as scope of analysis, what this plan should actually involve. So this plan should state the following information. So what is it is? The first one is it should state the objectives. What are the objectives for which you are using the life cycle costing? That objective should be clearly stated in your plan. And the second one is it should state the time period for each and every phase of your pro project. So if you are, if you have a project which involves three phases. Sir, so what is the time period for each and every phase? That should be clearly mentioned in the plan. Along with that, it should also mention the technical, operational, maintenance resources which is required for the project. That should also be stated in the plan. And the next is, it should state the assumptions, limitations or any constraints which is associated with the asset. Now, if the asset has any limitation, constraint or drawback, that should be clearly stated in the plan. And it should, should also state the alternative options for the asset. That is, if an asset is generally waste, then it should state what are the alternative options which is available to the company. And at last, the plan should state the resources required for the asset. What are the different resources in terms of men, material, power? What are the different resources required for the asset? That should be clearly stated in the plan. I am repeating it. In the life cycle cost planning stage, you have four step stages. And in the four sub-stages, the first one is development of a plan. And this plan should clearly state the five important information. That is, it should state your life cycle costing objectives, the period of each and every stage of your project. It should state the limitations of your asset. It should state the alternative options which is available with the organization. And it should also state the resources which is required for maintaining an asset. Once plan is developed, the next one is development of life cycle cost model. So this life cycle cost model is generally an accounting structure which generally gives an estimate of cost on your asset. I am repeating it, life cycle cost model is an accounting structure which specifies the cost involved on your asset. So, in order to develop this life cycle cost model, what has to be done? The first thing is create cost breakdown structure. So, here you have to create a cost breakdown structure where your entire cost is broken down into different elements. And under this cost breakdown structure, you have to clearly show what is the cost which is involved in each and every phase of your project. And the second one is Identify cost elements which don't have impact and eliminate them. So once you have created the cost breakdown structure, from that cost you have to identify those costs which do not have an impact on your asset. And that cost has to be eliminated from the list. And the third one is you have to select a method for estimating the cost. Which method you have to follow in order to estimate your cost. And you also have to find out whether there are any barriers or limitations while selecting your method. That is when you select one particular method, you may have disadvantages or you may have barriers. Then find out those barriers which hinder you from selecting a particular method. And the last step and next is you have to combine 
all the costs which are identified in differences. So you have breaking down the cost into different elements, isn't it? Now in the last step, what you have to do is you have to combine all the costs which you have identified in different phases. And you have to prepare a unified cost structure of your project. Clear? Once that step is over, the third stage is implement LCC model. So you will have historical data relating to your project, isn't it? So using that historical data, implement this LCC model in your organization. Okay. Once that is also over, the next step what you have to do is recording and reviewing LCC results. That is whatever results you have obtained, you have to prepare that in a form of a report. So that this report can be used by the management for decision making. Is it clear? And once life cycle cost planning stage is over, the next stage is life cycle cost analysis preparation stage. So this is a stage where life cycle cost model is practically implemented on the basis of actual data. I am repeating it. So life cycle cost analysis preparation stage is a stage where the life cycle cost model what you have prepared in step 1 is implemented on a real time basis. That is using the actual figures from a similar assets or from the organization which is using the asset. You will collect that information on actual basis and you implemented it on real time basis. Clear? Once real time implementation of this life cycle model is done and the last step is life cycle cost implementation and monitoring. This is a stage where you generally verify the life cycle cost model in order to find the areas where cost saving can be done. In order to find out where future life cycle costs have to be decreased. This is how life cycle cost model is actually implemented. Once again we will have a picture. The first stage what we are doing is we are planning the life cycle cost. Under that you have four sub stages that is development of a plan, development of LCC model, implementation of LCC model, recording and reviewing LCC, LCC results. So this is a stage we are using historical data and we are implementing life cycle cost model. And the second stage is here you are using the actual data and you are implementing this LCC model. And under the third stage you are reviewing your results in order to check whether any modification has to be done for saving your cost in the future. Okay. So this is about stages and let's go on with the benefits of life cycle costing. So the best, first benefit what you have is comparison. So with the help of life cycle costing, you can easily make comparisons for selecting a project. Whether you have to select this project or another project, that selection can be made with the help of life cycle costing. And the second one is provides complete financial picture. So in life cycle costing, from the starting stage till the ending stage, you are including all the costs. So a correct financial picture of cost can be presented with the help of LCC. And the third one is decision making. So with the help of life cycle costing, you can make different important decisions like fixing selling price for a product or make or buy decisions that can be taken with the help of life cycle. And the fourth one is reduces investment risk because you are estimating the cost from the start to the end. So your investment risk generally gets eliminated when you use LCC. And the last one is reliable planning. So with the help of life cycle costing, full detailed information of cost structure from the starting to the ending is available. Using this information, the management can get can plan a real source of what has to be done. Okay, so this is about the benefits. Thank you.